Okay, let's have a look at um, 6.4. <coughs> We've got a timber, three meter span. It's nicely symmetrically loaded, so it's straightforward to work out the reactions either side. The width is. Um, there's a nominal width of 120, the actual width is 100 millimeters, is to support the free concentrated loads. So I guess um, if you say the actual, I'm going to be using the 100, not 120. Knowing that it's great timber. So the stress that can be used, so that shouldn't be PSI there. So that's the stress that uh, the timber is allowed to experience. Um, so that'd be the bending stress, and this will be assumably the shear stress. That's um. That's allowed to experience. Determine the minimum required depth D. Okay. So the first thing we'd want to do here is do a quick sketch of the shear force diagram. So the 5 is going to get split either side, 12.5 plus 2.5, so we get 15. So I'm going to 15, 12.5, 5 in the middle, 12.5, and then 15 at the end again. So my shear force diagram will go 15, drop 12.5, so it goes down to 2.5, and, and then move across, drop 5, so it becomes minus 2.5, and go across, and then it's going to drop 12.5 again, so it becomes minus 15. Okay, so that's my shear force against X. <coughs> um, now the first kind of stress that we're going to do is uh, we're going to have to look at the bending stress. So see how much bending we're going to get. So I'm going to integrate the bending just up to the halfway point. So what's the bending stress diagram look like? This first section here is 0.6 meters long. So that's 15 times 0.6. So that gives me 9. Next section is uh, 0.9 meters long. So I'm going to use the 9, yeah. and then I'm going to plus 2.5 times by 0.9, and then that gives me 11.25, and it come down, drop down, same sort of thing. on that side. So the maximum bending stress occurs in the middle. Let's use the engineer's bending equation, M over I, uh, and we're going to use the, the bending stress divided by Y. 
So we've been told that we don't know the depth of this thing, but the width we've been told to treat as a hundred millimeters. So we've got a hundred millimeters and an unknown depth. Right, so let's uh, um, let's start rearranging this. So I've got, I know what the stress is going to be. So I'll bring the I and the Y over to the um, left hand side. I, O, um, okay, so I will have, um, yeah, so I over Y. Bring that over to the right hand side, then kind of switch it over to the left. And uh, that over that is going to be M over stress. Okay. Um, that's kilonewton meters. So here I or we'll use B D to the power three over twelve all divided by Y and that will be half D for maximum stress. So D over two and that equals the M which I've worked out and the allowable stress which is going to be twelve mega uh, Pascals. So therefore we've got um, 12, a 12 divided by a half ends up as a 6. The B we do actually know uh, and the D will become D squared. The M I know and the stress I know. So therefore my diameter based on the the bending and the uh, internal um, stress as it's being stretched is going to be take the 6 over to the right hand side 6 times by 11.25 to the power of 3 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by B so that's 100 millimeters divided by the allowable stress which is going to be 12 times 10 to the 6 Okay, so that is d squared point zero five six two five. So d is going to be square root of that. So d needs to be round it up. Doesn't sound right. Oh, maybe. D needs to be two hundred and thirty eight millimeters. So I've got two three seven point two, so obviously I'm gonna round my answer up. Okay, so that's the D that I need based upon bending stress and whatever. What about this shear flow condition? So we've got this, uh, the wood that is acting in effect like laminate. And will this kind of um, split? You know, you've probably seen that some, uh, sometimes before when you've been working with wood, that wood kind of can just split down the middle. So is that gonna happen? Uh, right, so 
So what am I going to do here? Let's go back to shear flow equation, start there. So Q equals V big Q over I. Uh, we've been given a stress, so let's change this into a stress then. So that is, uh, that's per unit length. So we want to uh, say that the stress is going to be Q divided by T, where T is the width. So that equals V Q I T. Okay, let's substitute in. So the the width I know um, the uh, I I can um, I can know in terms of d and q I can know in terms of d. So start with the i. I equals b d. So I'm going to use b then. V q i b. d to the power 3 over 12 and that's it what about q well for q I happen to know that the maximum shearing stress is going to be in the middle so I want to set my y um, base term to be the, uh, at the neutral axis so basically, I want to I want to find um, the first uh, um, moment of area is going to be the top half. So that's going to be a times y c. The area for the top half is b d over two. And the centroid, if I look at just the top half, will be uh, a quarter d. Okay, so that equals, bring it all together, b d squared over 8. Right, so I've got this term, got this term, let's plug it into here. So the Shear stress is going to be V Q, which is B D squared over 8, divided by I, B D to the power of 3 over 12, times by B. There's obviously, a lot of things are going to cancel here. So I've ended up with 12 over 8 V about my B's and D's so you've got B D squared on the bottom we've got two B's B times B I should say two B's B times B so overall we've got B on the bottom for the D's we've got D squared at the top D cubed on the bottom so we've got D on the bottom so you can see we've got force over area 12 over 8 is Five by four, top and bottom, three over two. So that tells me the um, condition that I need to test for the shear, um, the shear stress. So the D in this case, let's rearrange this for the D. Therefore. D, not B, sorry, D equals 3 over 2 V divided by V and we put the tau over there. So what's that? So the V we use is going to be the biggest V that I've got on my shearing uh, force diagram and that's going to be here that's going to be the 15 kilonewtons so I've got 3 
divided by 2 times by 15,000 divided by the width which is 100 millimeters um, divided by the stress uh, the shear stress is 0.8 mega pascals and that gives me again round up your answer don't round it down 282 millimeters yeah because if you're going to round it down to 281 well that could be critical so you've just you've just made your beam unsafe so go a bit above it and then you can compare your answers So if we were just doing an analysis based on the, the bending of the beam, we would say that we probably want wood that's about 240 uh, in depth. But in here, we want and probably, you'd, next number up would probably be you'd go to the timber merchant and buy 300 millimeter. So um, you'd probably want to use uh, 300 mil by a hundred millimeters or rather um that's the anonymous width so it'd be three hundred by one twenty isn't it that's probably what I'd be purchasing okay right that one's done then